All right, new virtual instrument, Valves Pro, just coming out today, and I want to have a short video that walks through something I am quite excited about with this virtual instrument, and that's to do with something I noticed in the first Valves. I've got a video on that one already, so I'll put a link to that in the description. I even played a little bit of tuba at the beginning of that one. But with that virtual instrument, it was all about these players, and I showed how you could take like one instrument and choose uh, one of their patches and sort of play articulations through that. But there really wasn't a way to have articulations, specific articulations with key switches on these virtual instruments. So you can see that you've got a tuba, a baritone or a euphonium, a trombone, a French horn, and a flugel horn. I have no idea what this one's gonna cost, but they did send it over to me for free. That's why I put paid promotion at the beginning. And of course I have an affiliate link in the description if you wanna help me out, but please make sure this one's right for you. Let's see what this one's all about. So when you get it going, you see that you've got three different choices. You've got ensemble, player, and solo. And the ensemble is neat. I showed a bit of the ensemble thing at the end of my last video uh, on valves, where I showed that you can actually play a chord and it will divide up the notes between the ensemble of your chord and it kind of as you move around. But before we dig into the key switches, let's kind of hear a little bit of what it sounds like with the player. So if I double click on the player, you can see that we got player condenser and player ribbon. So they have two different microphone setups for this one. We're just gonna look at the condenser on this one. With these ones, all you gotta do is play some chords and it's gonna play a rhythm for you. It's gonna play an arrangement for you. You can go in and dig into which instruments are playing. And then you've got them grouped by section and time, the style of them. Now I gotta say one thing while I'm waiting for the samples to load, this thing can take a lot of memory. You can see how, how fast it's loading right here with this little line. I've got 64 gigs of RAM on this MacBook Pro. It's 1.4 gigs, it looks like. And there's ways you can purge samples and stuff so you can still work with it on a mediocre computer, but just be aware of that. So that's the, the chill one. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go back to one I found earlier and that's this laboratorium one. So for me, these little patterns that they've got in here, at first I wasn't that excited about them because it seems like something I'd rather just play in myself, but it does feel like you're lacking inspiration one day, pull up this virtual instrument and start going through and looking for something interesting and uh, see if some kind of song gets sparked out of that. Very cool stuff. I'm gonna leave that one on there and then we're gonna start playing with some other patches. And on machine, what I showed is there's chord mode in the last video, there's chord mode where you can actually just tap a chord and it'll start playing these fun little patterns for you. And then what we're gonna do here over in Cubase is we're gonna go to the lower area and click on chord pads. This C here is going to trigger this chord pad. This one's gonna trigger, the C sharp's gonna trigger an A7 chord. <laughs> Now back 
back to the virtual instrument. And so now the last thing I'm gonna look at is if we go up to the top menu of Valves Pro, we're just gonna to go to the solo menu and see what these key switches with articulations are all about. So you can see if I click this little magnifying glass in the middle, we can see our five instruments. Let's go to a tuba. And right now you can see that we've got a bunch of articulations loaded. You've got four pages of articulations that you can load. They've got a bunch of articulations already loaded in there and you can click the little magnifying glass to see all of the articulations they've got. And they've got a ton of them. Legato, long, short, crescendo, swells that are timed to the beat of your music. And they've even got some rhythms that happen on some of these upper ones and then some noises on the very end. I'm gonna go back to legato and we'll try this virtuoso one because this one reminds me sort of of the string instruments that you get with a complete ultimate. And with this virtuoso setting, if I click these little three uh, dots here, you can see that we've got a couple of controls here. We've got pitch bend, gives access to three sets of three different articulations. So if I go all the way up, and play really hard, we get this upper one, play in the middle, we get that kind of flip up, and maybe with vibrato, and then here in the middle, then to the bottom I get staccatos. Find anything that's velocity based gets really tricky. But it's not one of those intelligent ones that switches to shorter articulations when you play faster or something like that, as far as I can tell. Now what you can do on any virtual instrument is load up the articulations that you want specific for a piece of music that you're working on, which is a way that I really like to work. And there are a ton of articulations. So let's just play some short articulations. And I could just change that to staccatissimo, which is a little shorter which I really like usually most of the time. Next one, we've got forte piano, and we've got some rhythmic stuff. And an expressive note. So now let's play something in with this little guy here. coolest part about this is the fact that they give you so many slots for key switches. And I've had virtual instruments where you have lots of articulations, but you only have like 16 or eight different slots for key switches in the virtual instrument. So you end up having to load up another virtual instrument with, you know, all of the short articulations or something like that. So very nice that they put that in there for us on this one. So let's look at the flugelhorn. So going between articulations is the big test for me. Switching between articulations and not having it sound like, oh, you're playing short and now you're playing long. These articulations do seem like they're, they're working seamlessly between each other. So let me play with the virtuoso settings and I'll just play something over top. But thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this helps you make that decision. Keep this one in the back of your mind in the future if you do have a need for these kind of specific brass instruments. See you in the next video.